today take for granted that our homes will have running water and flushing toilets. By turning on a tap, we have a steady supply of fresh, drinkable water, and we can get rid of waste by a mere press of a button or pull of a handle. However, it's really only over the past 150 years that improvements to sanitation have led to the general improvement in people's lives, with changes in Paisley mirroring those of most towns and cities which grew rapidly during the Industrial Revolution. Water, for drinking or for washing, had to be collected from wells or from pumps in the street. This meant queuing for ages, waiting your turn to fill a bucket, and then dragging it home, careful not to spill it on the way. The wells were not the cleanest and were easily contaminated, leading to diseases such as cholera. This illness swept through the country in 1832, causing around 50,000 excess deaths throughout Britain, 446 of them in Paisley. Over the following years, more cholera epidemics led to more unnecessary deaths. It was eventually discovered that contaminated drinking water was the cause of these frequent cholera epidemics. This led the town councillors of Paisley to authorise the building of a reservoir above the town at Stainley, with the first clean drinking water from it pumped into the town in 1838. As the water supply was slowly connected to the dwelling houses, attention turned to the other water-related problem, getting rid of the waste. Hardly any houses had a flushing toilet. These were the reserve of the wealthy who had the space to fit the cumbersome bathroom furniture into their large homes. For the rest of the population, a trip to the toilet meant using the outhouse, usually located in the back court of the tenements. The outhouse sat above a hole in the ground known as a cesspit, into which all the waste would fall. When it was full, the cesspit had to be emptied, which involved shoveling the waste into a barrow and then tipping it out onto the street, where it would be later collected, transported through the town in a wagon to the harbour and tipped into barges. These barges would sail down the river cart and dispose of their unpleasant contents into the River Clyde. The pipe water supply also allowed a sewer system to be built. The first sewer pipes were laid in the High Street in 1868, and by 1893 the whole town was connected to the sewer system. However, all the waste from the sewers was still being pumped straight into the River Cart, making it smell really badly, particularly in hot summer days. It took until 1923 before a sewage treatment works was built out at Lee Park, near where the airport is now, meaning the waste didn't all have to be dumped into the river in the middle of the town anymore. Around the time that the sewer was being laid, there were huge advances being made in the field of sanitation. The flush toilet had been around for a few hundred years by then, with a type of flushing toilet having been invented in England in 1585 by John Harrington, godson of Queen Elizabeth I. This device was not widely adopted though, with most people still preferring to use a chamber pot. The first patent for a flushing toilet was taken out in 1775 by Scottish inventor Alexander Cummings, and from this time onwards, further improvements were made by many other inventors. Adding devices such as the U-Bend and the pull handle flush, both invented by the Yorkshire sanitation engineer Thomas Crapper. By the 1880s, the link between germs and disease had been confirmed by doctors, and people were happier to have toilets put inside their houses rather than having to trek to the bottom of the garden. In 1885, a flushing toilet small enough to be put into the average house was invented by the potter Thomas Twyford, and this led to a trend towards indoor rather than outdoor toilets becoming the norm. The first indoor toilets and houses in Paisley were put into the tower building on Nielsen Road, which was constructed in 1888. From then onwards, new buildings began to have indoor toilets, either in each house or a shared one in a tenement close. The shared toilets were also phased out in preference to each home having its own loo, although it was not until the late 1970s that close toilets were finally consigned to history in Paisley. At the beginning of this presentation, it was stated that most of us take for granted the level of sanitation that we enjoy. But this is not the case in many parts of the world. In fact, the United Nations estimates around 4.2 billion people, more than half the population of Earth, 
do not have access to safely managed sanitation facilities. So it's to raise awareness of this fact that the 19th of November has been designated World Toilet Day. To find out more about this worthy cause and how we can all do our bit, please visit www.worldtoiletday.info.